Oh, about 15 miles from the Strip in Las Vegas, we're at Sam Boyd Stadium, the home of the UNLV Rebels. It is a tad warm for autumn football, but it is a great matchup we have for you today. Temperature around 80 degrees. UNLV hosting the Wyoming Cowboys. Welcome upstairs, everybody, along with my partner, Sed Bonner. I'm Drew Goodman. Well, for the Wyoming Cowboys, it's been a while since they've been able to celebrate accomplishments this late in the season. In fact, the last time they won a division championship was in the old WAC in 96. Last time they won a conference championship, 93. All of that is in front of them. What a great turnaround for this club. Uh, Coach Bull has come in with a plan, and even after a two-win season a year ago, he stuck to his plan. All the players he has, they believe in the system, doing a great job. This is awesome for the state of Wyoming. It has been tremendous. And one of the major reasons they have been so successful this year is a sophomore quarterback by the name of Josh Allen. He's 6'5", he's about 225 pounds, 17 touchdowns in the air. He's run for almost 400 yards. The nation's going to learn about this kid quickly. You know, guys always talk about dudes. Josh Allen is a dude. Dudes are guys that make plays that change games for you week in and week out. And this guy with his ability to run and throw the football with accuracy changes the complexion of the game week in and week out. You see the strong arm on the move. He's accurate, can load up and launch the ball down the field in tight windows. This guy is a special, special player and every night out, you have to contain because he dances around and throws a 37-yard strike like that to hurt Boise State two weeks ago. Now, for UNLV to pull the upset, the key for them is to get off to a good start. They've made strides in the second year for Tony Sanchez, the new head coach at UNLV. They've made a change at quarterback. They're going to go with Kurt Palandek. He's an athletic kid. But again, the key is they've been sluggish out of the gate the last couple of weeks. Well, they're, they're missing the entire first quarter. But Palandek's a guy who's made some plays. We had him in one of our games a year ago. Guy played well. He's a guy that can get out of the backfield and run the ball. He's exceptionally fast. Coach Sanchez says he's improved tremendously on his passing game. Just by having to sit around and watch, he's getting understanding. An experienced guy, a guy that Coach Sanchez trusts to, to win the game for him. Well, the Rebels are excited about this opportunity. It's UNLV, it's Wyoming, it's the desert of Las Vegas. Come on back to Sam Boyd Stadium with us. Though the Wyoming Cowboys have a rich football history, many of their finest moments are a distant memory for Polk fans. But there's been a resurgence on the high plains of Laramie as Wyoming is unbeaten in conference play. And today, they look to continue playing a winning hand in the gaming capital of the world. in Las Vegas, not allowed. Well, we got a little bit last night. We are ready for football late in the Mountain West Conference season. The Wyoming Cowboys taking the field at Sam Boyd Stadium, enjoying their finest season since 1998. And here come the UNLV Rebels. Wyoming at 7-2, 5-0 in conference play, one of 12 unbeatens this year in conference play around the FBS. UNLV 3-6, 2-3 in conference play. As we go downstairs, third member of our crew, Brad Thompson, is with us. Brad? Thanks, Drew. For Wyoming, it's been a remarkable turnaround for them. 2-10 a season ago, and you mentioned it, 7-2 this season. That's plus 5 in the win differential. That's the biggest difference in the country for any team, and they still have a minimum of four games to go for this. So they can add to that win total, but the biggest in the country. And they've never won the Mountain West Conference since joining it in 1999. They can get a step closer to doing that today. And for UNLV, there's still a program filled with optimism. It starts with head coach Tony Sanchez. 
He exudes confidence. He's full of energy. He knows his team still has a lot to play for here for the final three games. You look there at the schedule. It's a tough task, but if they win out, they can become bowl eligible. And all they have to do today is look across this field to see the team that turned it around very quickly. So a lot left to play for for UNLV and Wyoming riding high right now. True. Well, I'm glad you pointed that out, Brad, because Tony Sanchez has great respect for Craig Bowl. Uh, there are a lot of ties between these two staffs. Goes back to Lincoln, Nebraska, quite frankly. We'll develop that a little bit later on in the broadcast. But I know that Coach Sanchez looks at Coach Bowl. He told us yesterday when we met with him at their facility, and he said they've done it the right way. They're in year three. Tony's program's in year two. But they're a model for where UNLV wants to get to. A total model. And, and what's missing that Coach Bowl has now? He has that consistent play from the quarterback spot. The level of play from all the other positions outside of all the injuries the Rebels have sustained this year has risen. They've got to get that consistent play from the quarterback spot to be consistent. Handled at the 12-yard line, and Williams takes it across the 20 to the 24-yard line. Wyoming won the toss. They deferred to the second half, so UNLV will have it initially. Here are today's players to watch, brought to you by Peterson. Devontae Boyd's one of the better receivers in the Mountain West Conference. Will Kreitler is leading that offensive line, and... One of the better safeties you'll see, just a sophomore, Andrew Winger. He was second team all conference as a true freshman a year ago. It'll be Kurt Palandek at quarterback. Charles Williams and Lexington Thomas normally share time. Lexington Thomas has a bad wheel. And we watched him warm up with that ankle, and he does not look healthy. I like it out of the gate. UNLV wanted to throw the football to loosen up. That great run defense of Wyoming. They wanted to get Devontae Boyd involved, and bingo on the first play, 12 first, yards, and they move the sticks. First play of the game. He's got a lot of man coverage. He's going to see a lot of man coverage from Rico Gafford, a guy that can match his speed, but you have to respect it. You see the good push up field, ball delivered on time. Good start for Palandek as well. And now they hand the football off to Charles Williams. He gets a couple of yards. It'll be second down and eight. Lincoln Wilson, who was the Mountain West Conference Defensive Player of the Week, got a piece of that tackle. Williams last week had a career high in carries, 22, and he rushed for 141 yards in UNLV's loss to San Jose State. Accurately put, it should be, say that uh, it's two weeks ago. Here's Palandek, he can do this into the secondary across midfield to the 47-yard line and a first down for the Rebels. Well, this is what they needed more than anything to get off to a good start. As we talked about a few minutes ago, the first quarters, the first halves, quite frankly, have been very poor of late for UNLV. They've done a good job fighting back. They did it against Colorado State, but they were down 35 nothing, a loss there. San Jose State, they fell behind by 20. And, and Coach Sanchez says it's not about always scoring touchdowns, but just how about just flipping the field? Yeah, right They're in here. the process of doing that right now. Palandek all day, and now he'll tuck it down, and he makes a man miss. He's going to have another first down to the 32-yard line. So immediately, the guy who came off the bench two weeks ago against San Jose State is giving the Rebels a lift, Lucas Waka, on the tackle. You know, they, they run a waggle, and it's a little bit discombobulated. you got a post here, a corner there, and it's a little bit strange on, on the continuity of the route but once he gets outside this is what he does best he's got great feet he's a fast guy can run and that's always good decisions when you're moving the sticks with your legs and not having to put it in harm's way quick throw Boyd dragged out from behind at the 10 yard line if that tackle is not made by Gafford it's a touchdown number five Rico Gafford is going to mirror Boyd all day. That's a tough assignment. That's a that's a great patient stab, and he did it twice there. Just not running down in there on the slant route. He gives him a stutter, gives him another stutter after he straightens him up. And what I mean that by that, he gains inside leverage on the defensive back by straightening him up out of his position. That's a great throw and catch. Two tights. David Green is now the setback. And he gets the call. And he's heading toward the end zone inside the five to the two-yard line. That'll be very close to a first down. Again, it's Gafford defensively. They're going to mark him a little bit short. 
So it'll be second down and about a yard for a first down and about two and a half for the touchdown. It's a really good job of that offensive line who seems to come out here and have played really well. One with a big line up here, two tights, two fullbacks. Mark oh. Phillippe in there. Yep, Phillippe is number seven, the lead back in the eye. They go to Green, and he is bear hugged. Man, storming through there. Was that Chase Appleby? Of course. <laughs> of course what a player. Was. Chase Appleby, what an extraordinary year he has had. The senior from Frisco, Texas, a little undersized, but he's got a whole lot of want to. When you try to cut a guy that has a kind of athleticism, and Chevalier tries to cut him, but he just runs by it before he can even get the cut down to his feet. And now that puts UNLV off schedule. That's a loss of four yards. It's third down and five for the first. And they're seven shy of the end zone. Devontae Boyd is the inside man, trips left. Pound deck out of the gun. He's in trouble, and he's brought down. Making the tackle was Logan Wilson for the sack. And Wyoming, and a bull's its neck after Wyoming watched UNLV travel to their two-yard line. The Rebels now went the wrong direction. They'll have to settle for an Evan Pantel's field goal attempt. And it'll be a 30-yarder from the far hash mark. Try to run all slants there, and the routes again weren't in schedule or in line with each other. You've got to have the proper spacing and separation you want to try and throw slants there. And Pantels has missed only one kick all year. Perfect on extra points, and now 9 of 10 on field goals has the Rebels on the board, 3-0. Well, that's one of those deals from UNLV standpoint. You always want to score on that opening possession, and you feel good about three, but you feel like, man, we should have had six. Should, should have had six. However, their goal was to come out, sustain some drives, move the ball, change field position. Well, they did better than that. They put points up. Even though it's only three, they put points up. You don't want to get blanked, especially after traveling down the field that way, having your way with the Cowboys defense. UNLV in spurts this year, you've seen them much improve from a year ago. It takes a while to see it demonstrated in the one loss column. There's an interesting guy, DJ May. He's a 216 pound linebacker, former running back. How many linebackers return kicks in college football? My guess is not many, but May does. And he's good at it. Former running back for the Cowboys. Yep, and look at him. He's got an opening. May still going to midfield. That's why that linebacker is still a kick returner. <laughs> and you know he's going to run with physicality as well. You know there's no shy and he's not going to not hit the hole. But this is well set up. Look at all the white jerseys and look at their leverage. There's a double team kick out. He makes two guys miss there. This is a great effort. Flashing back to his old tailback days. 49-yard return, actually, if it was the NFL, it would be a 51-yard return. College football, they don't count they got from where you, uh, I, I would change that also, from where you started. He was two yards deep, so half a field for Josh Allen and that potent Wyoming offense. And he wants a post route, and it's complete inside the 25 to the 23-yard line. He's got the big tight end, Jacob Hollister. Troy Hawthorne brought him down 27 yards on that pickup. They'll mark the football at the 24-yard line. 21st catch of the year for the senior from Bend, Oregon. I'll tell you what, he has been absolutely nightmare, giving fits to defenses over the last couple weeks. Brian Hill, play action, and a dart to the outside, and that looked like Tanner Gentry. I don't know if it was an option route set, but uh, looked he was too far inside, and, and Allen was looking outside. But it was really good job on the leverage coverage there by Tory McTire, who sat in the window, didn't allow him to get the ball outside. And it could have been just a throwaway, which proves Allen's making good decisions. 
Drew Van Manen in at fullback. I formation, and here comes Hill. He bounces wide. UNLV has this bottled up nicely. But you see one of the great things about Brian Hill. He was contacted right around the line of scrimmage. The body lean still ends up giving him a couple of yards, so it'll be third down and eight for Wyoming from the 22-yard line of UNLV. Early going, first quarter, 3-0 Rebels. Brian Hill now at 1,300 yards for the season. He's the third leading rusher in the country. A junior from Belleville, Illinois. 220-pounder. Look for the middle of the field. Your tight end's got a mismatch inside on the safety. Pressure coming, sacked at the 30-yard line. They brought heat. Mike Hughes, the nose tackle up the middle, got there initially. The UNLV plans on bringing five or six, and this is a delayed blitz off the edge from McTire. That's a nice job inside. He's able to beat Caden Jackson. Mike Hughes does, just beats him off the ball. Nice little upfield move and slaps underneath. Cooper Roth from 46 yards, and the kick is good. 46-yarder is a season long for Roth, a freshman kicker from Longmont, Colorado. And we're tied at three. 8.07 to play, opening quarter. Sam Boyd Stadium in Las Vegas. week here in Las Vegas and we also want to take this moment to honor our veterans for all they have done throughout our history and what they continue to do around the world each and every day not only yesterday on Veterans Day but each and every day 3-3 our score with Seth Bonner and Brad Thompson I'm Drew Goodman glad you're with us from Las Vegas on Root Sports Jericho Flowers and Charles Williams back deep. Both teams have had it once, and both teams put together solid drives. This is returnable. This will be McTire, and he's across the 20. He's gobbled up about the 22-yard line. That's where UNLV will have it for the second time. Well, in the First possession on the first possession for UNLV. Kurt Palandek ran the football a couple times for 34 yards. Hey, he's a magician with the zone read game. He's got really good hands. Does a nice job with his ball fakes. And he's an adequate passer who has improved from a year ago. Out of the gun. And down the middle, that's a great catch from the tight end at the 41-yard line. That's Andrew Price. That is a big target. Pick up a 19. He's 6'6", 255 pounds. Marcus Epps, the strong safety, brought him down. You can't miss this guy. No, you can't. If he stays on the move, that's a big-time catch and run after. But he's, he starts to sell his feet. They're still trying to get him to understand how to run routes and play that position. 
Another accurate throw early from Palmdale. David Green has checked in for Williams in the backfield. And Green, now they're going to run a reverse, and this is going to lose a lot of yards. Logan Wilson, what a game he's already played this afternoon. Again, the reigning Mountain West Conference Defensive Player of the Week. That's a seven-yard loss. This is a redshirt freshman from Casper, Wyoming. Who, who was probably on everybody's list a no-star guy, but he's a five-star guy for Wyoming who just stays at home and does his job. You see him outside there. It's a great effort. Being smart, don't chase the play. Do your job. Second and 17, QB draw. Palandek, long strides to the 46-47 yard line. And that will bring up a third down and manageable. Palandek's an interesting story set. He's from Laney College, originally from Illinois. He played just one semester in Laney College. Coaching staff for Tony Sanchez knew the head coach there. And they needed another quarterback. And so they brought him on. He came in, he had spring practice, and he's battled some shoulder issues in the past, but he's an athletic kid. Pressure coming, slant, and it's complete to Flowers. And he'll have a first down to the 36-yard line. Jericho Flowers, who three weeks ago was a defensive back. Devontae Actually, Devontae Boyd, let me correct that. That's Boyd. And I tell you what, 83. he's gotten off to a great start. That ball is stuck in there. Gafford is all over him. And listen, on all three of these plays, Gafford's been in really good coverage position. But Boyd has just been dominant early on in this game. Palandek put it in the only place where just Boyd could make a play on it. On the zone Walker. read, David Green with a decent gain on first down. Lucas Waka made the tackle. 45, the senior backer from Texarkana, Texas. Green's going to get a lot more carries today. He figures to. He's normally the short yardage back. It's frequently Charles Williams and Lexington Thomas, but Thomas unable to go with an ankle injury. Second down and six. Here's a jet sweep to Flowers, and he's got the edge. He's got the end zone. No flags. Touchdown, UNLV. For Jericho Flowers, his first career touchdown. 34 yards. That's a play you don't see Wyoming get outflanked on very often, but watch as he comes around. Watch the block of number 43, Tim Holt. Watch him clear the edge. Takes up the outside man. Safety is too slow coming down. Antonio Hull can't get there. Big play and a great start. Well, this, Just this, what the doctor ordered. Absolutely. For the this, Rebels. Is, this is what has eluded UNLV. Good starts. They've got 10 points here with five minutes still to go in the first quarter six plays 78 yards 34 yard run from jericho flowers 10-3 rebels lot to cheer about unlv up 10 to 3. their last six games they've scored a grand total of 14 points in the first quarter so to see them with 10 points cause for celebration on the sideline as well let's check in with brad thompson brad Guys, you talked about the first half and how things have gone, not gone well. They've been outscored 62 to 10 in the first half. And as Wyoming gets a kickoff here, that's DJ May. Another good return, but they've been outscored 62 to 10 in the first half of the last two games. They made changes to practice here. They're coming off a bye week after stretching. They went good on good, ones on ones, right after stretching to start practice to get the energy level up. That energy level is carried over to the sideline here today. They are fired up on the sideline right now. Also, just a quick update, cornerback number 24, Robert Jackson on the opening kickoff hurt his right arm. They took him into the locker room. He was not out there on that first defensive possession. He's not out there right now. 13, Darius Mouton in his place. Well, Mouton plays a lot of football. They have some depth at cornerback. Allen, deep throw, back shoulder, and it's knocked away late. That is outstanding coverage. That is Mouton right there. 
Take a look at our first bank players to watch with Wyoming having the football. Naturally, all eyes on 17, Josh Allen. But also their tight end, Jacob Hollister, has a big catch in this game. Up front, they're led, led by Chase Ruyer. He's a senior from Savage, Minnesota. And Ty Lotulelo is one of the better linebackers in the western part of the country. Brian Hill, nowhere to go. He's going to get a, well, try to get a block from his quarterback, and he's going to lose yardage. UNLV offense on fire and has fired up the defense. The two safeties combined to make that tackle in the backfield. Kenny Keyes and Troy Hawthorne. It's a loss of six. There's Hawthorne, number 11. He's a good football player. Very good football player. Second on the team in tackles. Next to Talo Tulele. Right now, the effort from these guys is tremendous. Right now, Wyoming, who runs the football exceptionally well, top 20 team rushing the football, they have minus 11 yards on the ground. It's third down and 16. They run a draw. Here's Hill. And Hill tackled from behind at the 30. And Troy Hawthorne is able to track him down. Three and out for Wyoming. I, I think they've got to continue to, to take advantage. Speaking of Wyoming, it's got to continue to take advantage of the matchup with Jacob Hollister has in the middle of the field against linebackers and safeties. He runs extremely well. It's a tough matchup. Ethan Wood has it away. Makai Stevenson thought about fielding it on a hop. And it takes a Wyoming roll down inside the 20-yard line. So UNLV's had it twice, a field goal, and then a touchdown drive. They're up 10-3 at home. I'll let you know later on. Boise State's at Hawaii. New Mexico is in Logan, Utah, taking on the Aggies. And Palandek slips and slides for about five yards. UNLV has outgained Wyoming so far, 147 to 26. Xavier Campbell, normally the fourth team running back, he's going to get some opportunity today. Number 35 is in the ball game. Play action and a throw complete. First down, 34 yard line. And it's Devontae Boyd again. Gafford's going to have to stay focused and not, not allow this early success. He's got to stay focused and try to steal, steal, steal one of these here. That, that or UNLV is going to force Wyoming to remove a player from the box and right. give him cloud coverage. And start using it with the quarterback runs. They got an extra blocker with them. But he's pressing, but not getting any hands on the receiver. He's pressing and bailing. Did he control That's that? A bobble. That looked like it was a bobble. They're going to give him the catch. Six yards, five catches, 63 yards now for Boyd. Coming off a career high with 136 on six catches at San Jose State. He only have to have one foot down. I think he controlled it. And had one foot down before he went out of bounds. If you're, you've got an ex receiver who's on the ball, you've got to get hands on him. You can't just stand close and not touch him. Boyd into the boundary, three receivers right. Quarterback draw. This is by design. Palandek gets a couple yards, and Logan Wilson came up and blew him a kiss. So it'll be third down and four. We'll go with the draw play. Watch the back. It's set up nicely. And it closes up. Logan Wilson, I'll tell you what. Retro freshman who is just coming on like gangbusters. Yes. Coach Steve Stannard right there. And Coach Stannard's defense needs to get a stop. Third and four. Deep throw, and it's over the head on a corner route of his intended target. That's Tim Holt. Plays some tight end, also plays some fullback. So Wyoming. Will turn away UNLV. They'll get the football back. Just off off schedule with the timing on that throw and and the route as well. Evan Pantels kicks and punts. Austin Conway back deep for Wyoming. He is dangerous. He is really elusive. He's back around his own 23, 24 yard line. Still just getting his football legs back. 
was a basketball player at Wyoming. And he's knocked down right at the 24 yard line. Punt of 40 yards, return of just a couple. Troy Hawthorne down on special teams making the tackle. You know, Brian Hill has had an extraordinary career at the University of Wyoming. In his last uh, ball game, 142 yards and two touchdowns on the ground against Utah State. But last year, he torched UNLV, 232 yards rushing. And he's third in the nation this year in rushing. Off to a slow start as UNLV has thrown him for a loss a couple of times. They say, Go straight ahead. This th that's their bread and butter play. It's power in the A gap, and there was no movement. No movement. But you're also dealing with a couple guys in their their Mike linebacker as well as their Will linebacker, Tal Lotulelu, who makes this play, who can come downhill, scrape. You see him keep his outside arm free, but he's not going to get run through. He's going to be able to wrap up, and finish plays. That offensive line led by Chase Rulia is going to have to do a good job getting to the second level. Three receivers right, seven step drop, and in the flat it's complete. This will be a first down and hurtling his way to the 46 yard line is the tight end Hollister. Tim Huff was the one who ended up making the tackle, but Hollister went airborne. This is a Y under or Y shallow. He comes across the formation. You see the zone coverage empty out the side of the field which gets him on the catch with plenty of room to run. Really good job by Josh Allen to, to retreat a little bit away from pressure and make the throw. Hill, still nowhere to go. Hawthorne was the extra man in the box. And he came up and made contact right around the line of scrimmage. That'll be the final snap of the first quarter. And UNLV has been impressive, trying to shock 7-2 and two Wyoming. They're up 10-3. to three. Football on Route Sports is brought to you by the Wyoming Department of Transportation. No excuses, always buckle up. And by USAA Insurance, banking and investments tailored for the military community. Second down, nine yards to go as we begin the second quarter. Drew Goodman, Sed Bonner, and Brad Thompson breaking on the football and knocking it aside is number four, Tory McTire. Josh is late with this ball. This is a late throw. He's Receivers open and ready for it, and Josh Allen is is kind of about a half a second off. He's a little bit slow to deliver. McTire does a nice job of coming downhill. Anytime those receivers stop, those defensive backs are driving. Well, against this personnel group, you're going to see UNLV blitz quite a bit. This time they're going to bring four. They have a twist up front. Allen's got a lot of time. And on the move, he throws a deep shot, 50-50 ball, came back and caught the ball at the seven-yard line. Tanner Gentry adjusted. Quite frankly, he wasn't open. He was not open. He was open initially. He loses it. And again, Josh Allen, with his ability to get out of the pocket and move, throws well on the run right there. He's open right there. That ball should be up in the air to him. But he continues to work. He's going against Ken Kenny Keyes, who's a safety. That's a mismatch when you get your one of your top receivers on a safety. 29 straight games with a catch for the senior Gentry. 50 yards on that pickup. Allen hands to Hill. He tries to bounce it. He gets wide to the end zone. Touchdown, Wyoming. The Cowboys respond. They take advantage of that great adjustment that Gentry made to catch the football and then Hill gets in the end zone for the 14th time this year. This play starts inside with power. He beats Kenny Keyes in the hole who allows him to get outside of him. Great job by Drew Van Man and by Drew Van Manen to get the edge, seal the linebacker, and allow the bounce. Cooper Roth makes the extra point and we have a tie football game. 
As we are just 42 seconds into the second quarter. 10 for UNLV, 10 for the Wyoming Cowboys. Well, in the preseason in the Mountain Division, this is how the media thought they finished. Boise State, Air Force, Utah State, CSU, New Mexico, Wyoming. Wyoming was picked last, they're first. Boise State is still very formidable. New Mexico has had another good year for Bob Davey. 10-10 here in Las Vegas, and the knee went down. You cannot get up, so that's a bad break. Charles Williams inadvertently downed the football at the seven-yard line as he was trying to pick up that short hop. So UNLV is backed up. No partner. So far, UNLV's gotten off to that great start that they need. It's something that's really eluded them most of the season. And you can tell they are energized with an opportunity to knock off a team that has been outstanding this year in Wyoming. Very energized. And I think they still realize that everything's out in front of them as well. You know what? They've got three wins. They need three more wins to become bowl eligible. They have all those things out in front of them. Take care of the little things that you can take care of. And the rest will do what it's supposed to do. Well rested coming off a of bye week. David Green is the lone running back. Palandek, deep shot, and it's over the head of Boyd on the post route. Gafford was stride for stride. See, and that's a that's a throw that has to pull him away from the defensive back, not take him back up the hash to the defender. He's got to put that ball somewhere in the middle of the field, let him separate, because there's a separation. Watch once he hits inside, and he's running away. Now you could throw the ball. See how he's leaning back over the top? If he throws the ball away to the middle of the field, you get a better look of it here. That ball needs to land out there in that vicinity over there somewhere instead of up the hash. It makes it an easier job for him to try to get back to it. Second and 10. And the ball's on the ground. Still loose. Wyoming's on it. They have scored on defense yet again. They have done this all year. And guess who got the rock? Logan Wilson. He had the game ceiling pick last week against Utah State. And he falls on the football 16-10 Wyoming. That defense has scored all year. They came in among the top five in the country in scoring points on defense. And that's just not what you, you can't have that. You cannot have a, a botched zone read in your own red zone. You can't, that's what's plagued this team, just the simple mistakes. It's not about fumbling, and, but missing assignments, doing those kind of things is what gets you in trouble. Charles, Wolf, Charles Williams and, and Kurt Palandek did not have a good mesh there. You've got to be decisive. Take it out of there, especially down in the red zone. Five times this year, they have scored a defensive touchdown. They also have the safety that ultimately beat Boise State 30-28. And that was provided by Chase Appleby. Steve Stannard's got to be thrilled as we check in again with Brad Thompson. Brad. Guys, a little interesting reward system for the defense of Wyoming. You mentioned how that's their 20th turnover on the season. They came in number one in the Mountain West. And so they give out candy bars for different plays on defense. Hits, pressure on the quarterback equals a Snickers. Pass breakup, a Butterfinger. And if you get a touchdown, which just happened there, a bag of candy bars. So an interesting reward system and how that plays out. These guys are hyper competitive athletes. Any reward, they're going to do anything they can to get. And it's been a real point of emphasis, and they've done it all season long. So candy bars and, again, turnovers all season, number one in the Mountain West. I guess you're not worried about your kids getting fat. <laughs> hey, they're on a good training table up there, man. Yeah. They're on a good program. It'll be all right. McTire from the five yard line. And he is spilled as he crosses the 25 at about the 27 or 28 yard line. So we'll see how UNLV now responds. Right, well, you're going to see just a mesh here. And look at the lane inside, and Poundex trying to pull it. But watch the little foot, foot kick right here on accident by Appleby. Kicks it out of there. And Logan Wilson, I tell you what, when you play fast and hard, good things just happen for you. And this young man is, is reaping a ton of benefits just from effort and being a pretty good darn football player. 
Palandek, heat in his face, and he's a little bit high on the stick route to Devontae Boyd, and Gafford flipped him up uh, upside down. So it'll be second down and 10. And they'd like that matchup. Outside, you see the quick out, or the hitch route, excuse me, but the ball late. You see the receiver standing there waiting. When you're throwing hitches or 90s, that ball needs to be on the way before the receiver stops and turns his shoulders. You can't stand and wait for the ball on a hitch and expect it to be complete. Williams will get about five yards. And we'll see what UNLV does here. Palandek had the hot hand early, six out of six. He's missed his last three throws. As you look at Logan Wilson, who's made a slew of tackles and also has a defensive touchdown. I, I would say if there's another area for, for UNLV with a matchup problem is the big tight end, Andrew Price. A semi roll. Palandek is in a world of hurt and he's dropped Lucas in the backfield Waka. and it's Waka. What a career Lucas Waka's had, the Mike linebacker from Texarkana, Texas, the younger brother of Michael, the outstanding pitcher for the Cardinals. I'll tell you what, he's a kid that really had to fight through a lot. Came on early as a freshman, played well for one coaching staff, new system. You see the relentless play, new system. He comes in, he, he doesn't play much. A year and a half ago, last year, played a new position. He just continued to fight, get bigger and stronger. And now he's having that great senior year. Well, this is a funky looking punt, but it's going to work out beautifully for Evan Pantels. Inside the 10, barely a 65 yard punt for Pantels, which is his long of the season by eight yards. 17 10 Wyoming. College football on Root Sports is brought to you by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Push button, get mortgage by Union Wireless. Now get $75 per new line with simply shared plans. And by Tire Pros, take the hassle out of tire buying. Find your local dealer at tirepros.com. Wyoming a 17-10 lead. Conway on a jet sweep, nowhere to go. Puts his head down and gets back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be second and 10. That's not what a normal basketball player does. They keep running to the sideline. Just shows you he's getting back in football mindset. Get north and south real quick. It's a great job by him. I'll tell you, Josh Allen, only three completions, but for 96 yards. He shows you the big play playmaking ability that he has, especially when he gets outside the pocket. They go to Brian Hill, gets a lead block from his fullback. He cuts wide. Dive ahead to the 19-yard line. It'll be third down and about one or two from that spot. I'll tell you, Drew Van Monen does a nice job here. He helps seal the edge right there. You're going to see him chip, and then he goes to the second level. That's fullback play at the highest level. Gets there before Kenny Keyes and Matt Lee can get him on the ground. Well, with Hill's presence in the backfield set, third and two for so many teams is a pass down. It's often a run down for Wyoming. Eight in the box for UNLV. Here comes Hill, patiently trying to get where he needed to go. Did not get anywhere close to the 20-yard line. In fact, he'll lose a yard. Tao Lotulele, the 235-pound senior from Maui High School. Keith Walls, Tao Lotulele. Look at the Keith Walls stuff the edge. Boy, that Lotulele is a beast. He can really play. He can run. He's strong. He's quick. Makai Stevenson back at his own 45. And Ethan Wood with a high spiraling punt. He turned it over to the 35 and then retreating to the 30. Great coverage for Wyoming. A punt of 48. And actually a loss of a few yards on that return as Antonio Hull made the play on special teams for the Cowboys. 17-10, Craig Bowl 
Played his college football at Nebraska. Then was a GA there for the great Tom Osborne. And so many ties between the staff of Nebraska, or the staff of uh, Craig Bowl and the staff of Tony Sanchez. It's all tied together with Nebraska. And there is uh, Coach Bowl working in Lincoln. And then he moved on to North Dakota State. What a run there, 11 years, three straight national championships. And of course, he came to Laramie, got the job there. And one of the first things he did is he got in a pickup truck and drove all over the state of Wyoming. Palandek keeps forging relationships. He's recruited the Centennial State of Colorado hard. His first couple of years, listen, it was tough. Wyoming. Didn't have a ton of players, just two and 10 last year, but what a great turnaround here in 2016. He said, if you're gonna, if you're gonna join me, you gotta be all in. That's, and that's what those first two years did. It weeded out the guys that were uncommitted to the plan and what was happening. Great hands catch right there. Yep, great hands catch by Trevor Kahneman. He doesn't see the football that frequently. Normally a blocking tight end. I tell you that's from uh, the University of Illinois. That's where you can you can really get some hay right there with, with the tight ends. You know you've got a great outside threat, and Boyd. But the middle of the field is wide open. We got Kahneman with great hands. You see there, Andrew Price, as well as Tim Holt. All three guys can run and, and run good routes. Two tights and a wing back on third and two. They fake the jet sweep, and Palandek will keep for a first down to the 42-yard line. Logan Wilson will get credit for the tackle. Excellent job. Of, once he makes the fake here, this is an inside run all the way. This is, you run the fly sweep, it's kind of like a cake, cake play. You see the pulling guard right to left. He allows it to clear and then hits it. That's a great play call, but Palandek makes that play by hitting it with speed, getting up in there quick. See Coach Cotton, Barney okay, Cotton. He's a okay, product of Nebraska. In fact, his son still a tight end there. And this is a nice little opening for Xavier Campbell. Campbell with just his 14th carry this whole year. Andrew Wingard made the stop. Another first down for UNLV. They're across the ago, 50 to the 47 of Wyoming. A year ago, partner, he, he and Lex Thomas were two young guys, the two freshmen that had come in and were going to be the next two featured backs. He's kind of fallen back on that list with the addition of Charles Wolf, Williams, but Xavier Campbell's a big body back, 200 plus pounds that can move things. Yeah, he's getting an opportunity. He's breaking tackles. He's getting 12 yards of chunk right now to the 34 yard line. Move the flags one more time. See there, runs right through an arm tackle. And that's a lot of body coming downhill. Runs right through DJ May. And just continues on for a first down. Three carries, 23 yards for Campbell. A week ago, what hurt the Cowboys is a zone read with a quarterback that could run the football. They'll run power again, and that is power right there. But you said it best. Sometimes, you know what? You have an opportunity. You don't take advantage of it initially. Then you find yourself looking up at a bunch of guys in front of you, and you say to yourself, when I, if I, get that chance again, I'm not going to mess it up. A lot of guys don't handle that right. A lot of guys don't prepare and get themselves right, get themselves ready. Things are cyclical. They always come back around if you continue to work hard. And right now you see Xavier Campbell. He's out right now, and this is green, and he gets hit in the hole, and he's still going. 15, 10, 5, touchdown, UNLV. You want to talk about power. Last four or five plays all in the A gap, all about effort. First Campbell, and now David Green, 27-yard touchdown run. Effort, wow. Effort and attitude by the guys up front. And this play is stuffed, but we're not wrapping up. We're blocking guys down. You've got, you've got Wingard there, as well as DJ May. No wrap up. There's no wrap here. And this is one of the best safeties in America, folks. He comes in with a good contact, doesn't wrap. Lost, his, lost his feet, too. Absolutely. And we're tied again at 17. Tony Sanchez. Really pleased. 
Why not? That was an impressive drive. UNLV has tied it up at 17. Their last five plays all run. Six yards, 10 yards, 13 yards, seven yards, 27 and a touch from David Green. As we look at today's scoring drive brought to you by Tire Pros. That was, we're going to hit you in the mouth. <laughs> and they did. No, there was nothing soft about that drive. Kreitler, Chevalier, Saxlin, Polu, Jacobson, and the tight ends. Kahneman, Holt, and Price, along with those two backs, Green and Campbell, were just dominant on that drive right in the face. Let's look at that run again by David Green. It's only right that it's finished off the same way. You see, look at all the hats on hats, but again, no wrap up. Two, two Wyoming Cowboys on the tackle. They don't wrap up. David Green, too big, too strong, is able to bounce off and finish the play. Now David Green is a senior from Dallas, Skyline High School down there, where he's waited his turn. He didn't have any touchdowns his first three years at UNLV. He's got seven now this year. Good football game. 25-yard line after the touchback for Wyoming. Again, Drew, waiting your turn and being ready when the number's called. Ball's loose on the ground. UNLV's got it at the 29-yard line. Just came out of the hands of Josh Allen. And that is really unusual for Wyoming because they have really taken care of the football this year. It was Tui Maloata. This is a zone read, and again, we see it right here. It just comes out of his hands. Good job of getting a hat on him, yanking the quarterback away by Tal Lotulele, so he can't get back on it. Maloata fell on the ball, and now a short field for UNLV from the plus 29. There's a bounce in the step of the Rebels. But right here is where you've got to go find a way to finish the drive. They go play pass, got a man open, and it's caught inside the 10 Boyd. First and goal, UNLV. What a grab by Devontae Boyd. A little bit inaccurate throw. However, he's able to stab it with his right hand, bring it down. And this is the one time that Gafford hasn't been on. And you see UNLV moving him to the inside slot. And the connection of the game. It's the Union Wireless connection wow. of the game. He's a giant receiver, New York giant receiver by o name of OBJ, who'd be uh, impressed with that catch. The Plus a one there. Where they bring him from. They bring him from the third receiver in trips. And he's able to stab it with his right hand. That gets him matched up with Epps, who's not as good a corner as Rico Gafford is. Well, Palandex completed eight passes. He's a smart kid. Six of them have been the boy. When you're seeing man-to-man -man as a quarterback, when your trip's away, you got man-to-man, -man, you've got to go to that guy all the time. It's like bracket coverage to the top. Boyd looking over the middle, and it's high, and it needed to be for Andrew Price. That was well defended. It'll be third and goal from the eight for the Rebels. Could have waited. Come to Makai Stevenson just outside. Watch the second route come underneath. That window is huge. There's... Too many Cowboys inside there. Wait on that, throw the slant right behind it. It was wide open. And the linebacker underneath, DJ May, who affected that also. 5.55 to go in the first half. It has been most entertaining. Two receivers to the top, Boyd and Makai Stevenson. Green in the backfield. And this is over the head of Makai Stevenson. That little rub route down there around the goal line. And we'll see the field goal unit for UNLV. There's a chance on the bottom half of the field. You had both your athletic big tight ends, virtually man-to-man, -man, and Tim Holt right here. These two guys are manned up. 
You gotta get those guys in some kind of combination route, take advantage of their size and ability to run routes. That was good coverage and buckling down by the Cowboys. And the kick is up and through, and UNLV takes the lead back, 20 to 17. And Wyoming probably feels pretty good about that sudden change situation, and they keep them out of the end zone. Sudden change followed by a big play. You know what I mean? They had all the momentum there. If you're UNLV, you've got to score something. You'd love a touchdown, but you've got to put points up. Wyoming says no thank you. Makes them settle for a field goal. In a game of momentum, and football generally is, UNLV got off to the fast start. Then you had the defensive touchdown for Wyoming. And UNLV put together a long touchdown drive recently, and then they get a turnover. This is really interesting. It rarely happens. Tony Sanchez was coaching here in Las Vegas at Bishop Gorman, which is as good a high school program as there is in the country. Right now, they're number one in the nation for Tony's uh, younger brother. The last guy to do was Todd Dodge. He went uh, from the high school ranks to Denton in North Texas. Most famously, it was done by Jerry Faust, who went from Cincinnati Moeller High School to South Bend. And it, it didn't go so well for Jerry Faust. I I would put, you know, we're in Vegas right now, I'd put a good amount of money that it's going to work quite nicely here at UNLV for Tony Sanchez. More on that in a moment. Here's DJ May, ball loose again. UNLV's got it. What a hit at the 17-yard line. It's a lot of boys. It's a lot of boys with a huge hit. Boys with the hit and the recovery by... Watch this hit. Watch this hit, because DJ May hits it, the ball's away from his body a little bit, but look at that hit. 48. Number 48, Bailey Lolaga. It's a big hit again. He thought, he thought 29 yards away was a short field. Now they have 18. Trips right for Palandek. And he'll throw it the flat to Campbell. Plenty of room to roam. Inside the 10. Hurls a man. Touchdown. Xavier Campbell. You're going to see Makai Stevenson, the freshman, outside, runs a route. Doesn't get the ball, sees the check down thrown, comes back, gets involved. First catch of the year for Campbell. But was this ever impressive? Edwin Moses-esque. Saw the big block right there, and then the hurdle from the big man, 5'11", 215 pounds. And he has changed the game since he's come in, Drew. Xavier Campbell has changed the game since he's come in. The interesting thing is initially, he changed it with his physicality. There he changed it with his finesse. Look how it all unfolds, and a great job of hitting the check down from Palandek. Good block right there by Makai Stevenson, and he goes Edwin Moses for the touchdown. 10 points, excuse me. Actually, 17 points since the last time Wyoming's won a play on offense. That, that is crazy, the kind of runs that Wyoming runs on people. UNLV is putting it on them right now. The Rebels are fired up. And the offense from Wyoming has not been on the field. That, that's what I mean. They 17, have not been on the field much. 17 points since Josh Allen has taken a snap. He actually, let me correct you, he took one and fumbled. One snap. Wow. UNLV up at home, 27-17. We're still 529 to go in this first half at Sam Boyd Stadium. Time of possession, UNLV 1653, Wyoming just 738. And DJ May, four yards deep, will put a knee down. Downstairs we go to Brad Thompson again. Brad? 
Guys on the Rebel sideline down here, you talked about momentum and confidence, how dangerous it is right now. And they are full of energy and ju juice down here. The Rebels are dancing around, bouncing around. They are feeling great, obviously 17 straight points. And it's, it's a dangerous time right now for Wyoming with all the momentum and confidence on the Rebel side. I want to embellish what we were talking about in a moment on Coach Sanchez and why we believe, and I'll speak for you here <laughs> also, because I know in so many conversations we've had that we believe Tony Sanchez is really going to get it done here, given time. Allen has time. Deep throws got Gentry. Just a little too far. That ball was 58 yards in the air. Without a lot of air on it. I mean, that was kind of on a rope. Beats Mouton on the route, but a little bit overthrown. It's a double move route. Watch him stick to the corner right there and back to the post. Turns the DB around. Ball's in the air and he can't run it down. Not enough top end speed up to go and get it. But the running game has been shut down. And we barely talked about Brian Hill. Again, the third leading rusher in college football. Pressure on the edge. Hill picks it up and it's caught by Jake Mallhart. His first catch of the ball game. 6-6 wide out. Troy Hawthorne knocked him out. It'll be third down and three. Coach Sanchez is relentlessly positive. He has put together a terrific staff. And also, what's been much needed at UNLV, they're getting a new football facility. They're breaking ground on it in the spring. They're going to have a new football stadium here by 2020. I think just a change in culture and embracing the city and what it means. Here's Hill up the sideline for a first down for Wyoming to the 47 yard line. It's Hawthorne making the tackle again, but a much needed first down for Wyoming after a 15 yard gallop. Talk about the power being the favorite play of the Cowboys. This time they go with the sweep, get him outside. He's able to outrun Matt Lee, low to Laley to the sideline. I tell you, Troy Hawthorne has been on just about every tackle or play in this game from a safety position. Allen stands tall, and it is nearly intercepted by Lotulele. They have only three picks all year. Roll into a cover three there. Started out with two safeties, so they looked like there was going to be a lot of room underneath, but you see Met. See the safety roll into the middle of the field. Tight end sitting there. Ball's a fraction of a, just a fraction late. It just seems like Josh is just a little off. I think you nailed it earlier. It's not only off, but just the timing is also off. He, he's a fraction late. UNLV starting to creep up to the line of scrimmage. Mouton showing blitz, and he comes with it. And this throw is incomplete. See, the more this goes along, the defensive backs, McTire, and, and, and on the other side, Mouton, getting a little more confident, playing a little closer to the line of scrimmage, getting up in the face of the receivers that they feel that they can handle at the line of scrimmage, not even let them off the line of scrimmage with press. And Kent Bear feels like he had a great game plan going in. They were going to bring a lot of pressure, and so far, his players have performed it well. Allen in trouble, and he's going to get sacked. Back at the 46-yard line. It was Nick Dedastian and also the Mike linebacker, 56, Ryan McAleenan, who's had a terrific career for UNLV. And Wyoming will have to punt. This defense has really confounded the Cowboys. Great punt. Wow. And he gets a little backspin, and it's finally tagged around the 10 or 11 yard line. Ethan Wood got that punt off. 27 17 UNLV, a punt of 43 yards. Right now, the, the defense from the Rebels are forcing the passing game to be a, a drop back passing game. There's, they're not letting any off kilter plays get down behind them. We saw one early in the game where Josh Allen was able to hit 
the big receiver Tanner Gentry for a long one, but they forced him to throw from the pocket and rallied to the ball from there and have been able to knock three or four balls away from receivers. They've got a good game plan and they're executing. 3.35 to go in the first half. Full complement of timeouts for UNLV. They fake the jet sweep and they go straight ahead to David Green. And he gets some movement out to the 15-yard line. Second down and about five yards to go. Another power. I tell you, they found something inside the undersized defensive line. And they're not trying to run away. They're going right at him. Holt resets and they'll run a stretch to green and zipping up and making the tackle was 28 Andrew Wingard and he reacts quickly in the run game the free safety is a sophomore from Arvada Colorado Ralston Valley High School he's a good player man six foot about 210 pounds which is just under 10 tackles a game third in the Mountain West 17 in the country just got named one of the 16 semifinalists for the Jim Thorpe Award, which goes to the outstanding defensive back in college football. Third down and four. Campbell, lone setback, and he gets the call, and nothing doing. So Wyoming gets a three and out. That was Marcus Epps who made the initial contact. Strong safety. Clock moving inside, two minutes to play in the first half. And Wyoming will get the ball back and they should get good field position. And they have three timeouts, Austin Conway. And here's the big thing for Wyoming. Indeed. You deferred the opening kickoff. So now you go down and put points up here with under two minutes. You go down and get points to finish this half, come out and get the ball, you're right there. You can either take the lead or even tie the game well, this is a big drive for Wyoming. They need to put something up here. It was an interesting decision. Craig Bull could have gone either way. He's been doing this a long time. He could have called the timeout there before the punt. He elected to, and he knew that Tony Sanchez was going to run it down to, and then call timeout. He elected to save all three on the offensive end. So 129 left. You get a punt after this timeout, 10-point lead for the Rebels. If you can't get enough college basketball, just uh, begin and tune into Root Sports. You see New Mexico hosting Houston Baptist at the pit. That is on Monday at 7 on your home for Mountain West Hoops. Tomorrow we'll be up in Fort Collins as New Mexico State at 2 in the afternoon. We'll be taking on Colorado State and uh, New Mexico State tomorrow afternoon. So a lot of college basketball. The Mountain West Conference. UNLV, speaking of hoops, the running Rebs lost to South Alabama. This is not a good punt. And Wyoming, as you were mentioning, with a great opportunity, with 120 to go, three timeouts, they'll have it right at midfield, just a 31-yard punt. Uh, UNLV has struggled at times this year getting turnovers. Today, they've played great team defense against Brian Hill, and they have forced some turnovers. Done a nice job of just staying on point, collisioning, making physical contact. Brian Hill straight ahead, just a couple of yards. They haven't gotten a lot of movement, which means Mike Hughes, the 315-pound nose for Kent Bear, is probably having a good football game. That's a good matchup. Hughes against Chase Rulier, the senior center, who's a terrific lineman for Wyoming. Timeout called, second down and eight. See the play is stuffed. Really good job up inside, and McLean in with the tackle. They're going to look at Mike Hughes. 6'2", 315 pounds. Right there. 
right here in Las Vegas. He has had a huge impact on this game. He's a tough guy and one of the biggest keys Kent Bear has told us to that UNLV defense. He comes out and bringing in pass rush guys here. 113 to go. Allen, he's throwing deep for Gentry, and it oh is caught. Touchdown! Oh. How did he make that grab? That was a great ball, first of all, but the grab was unbelievable. You talk about not putting enough air. Josh Allen puts a ton of air on this ball. And it's on the outside shoulder. Watch it drop over the outside shoulder. And great stab with one hand with Mouton all over him. You know what? I throw the ball to my kids all the time. And I think Odell Beckham Jr. started this. He, all kids want to do now is catch, catch a football one with one hand. He was forced to catch that one with one hand. Wow. What a grab by Tanner Gentry. He has two catches for 96 yards. Both of them 48-yard receptions. And both of them were spectacular. Extra point away from making it a field goal game. You, you said it, said, you said Wyoming is going to have a great chance to really get themselves back in this football game. And also, they're going to get the ball to start the second half. I didn't think, nor did UNLV, think they were going to give up this kind of play, though. No, the coverage is great. Your guy just outplayed my guy. Look at that. I mean, that's great coverage. In fact, it's probably borderline interference. It, it really is, but holy smokes, what a catch. Just concentration. He's able to stab it. But now, if you're UNLV, you've got to flip the switch. A minute, four left, two timeouts. Let's go get some points. Yeah, it's changed from there perspective also because Wyoming's ability to score so quickly. I mean the amount of concentration. Wow. That is the 18th touchdown pass of the season for Josh Allen, the redshirt sophomore from Fireball, California. The one stoplight town. I, I, I'm from California, never heard of it. Had to go look it up. Here's McTire. And he has a nice return to about the 36 yard line. So solid field position for UNLV. 57 seconds left and two timeouts. That is unbelievable. Oh my goodness. They're going to look at film on that. Darius Mouton is going to say, Coach, man, I was all over him. And he was. And that's, you can't do anything about that. Sometimes guys are just going to make fantastic plays or phenomenal. That's a phenomenal play. Phenomenal. It's a great way to describe it. So here's Palandek. Devante Boyd. You always have to be aware of him. He lines up. We also have this big wide guy right here in around the, the numbers. Of the field. There you go QB draw. Palandek. Big opening. Palandek. Just tripped up at the 42 yard line. He and Dalton Sneed, who was starting, Dalton Sneed runs well also. If there is a difference, because they're similar body types, Palandek has another gear. He, he's a 4 5 guy. Easily a 4 5 guy. He's got that, that breakaway speed. And the ball is not hung on to. A great effort by Andrew Price, who stretched out that six foot six frame. Okay, when he's trying to throw downfield, the one thing that gets him in his trouble is that platform. His front shoulder pops up in the air and the elbow drops. As soon as the elbow drops, that ball just sails on him. But you got a guy six six, you're trying to give him a chance to make a play in there. Gafford with good contact to not make sure the catch wasn't made. 38 seconds left, second and 10. Trips right. And it's complete right around the sticks. Tim Holt, nice job getting into the middle of the coverage, the zone, sitting it down, accurate throw on time. Remember, in college football, they stop the clock to move the chains. 
Allen Deck checks down. Campbell, he had about a yard. Now you got to call a timeout. Immediately, and he's trying to get to the sideline, but just good job by the defense from Wyoming to keep him in the field of play, force him to burn another timeout. Still have one left. But I like what I'm seeing from Valendek. He's not panicking. He's taking his check downs when he's supposed to. And, and I think he was buoyed by two things. He got to play quite a bit last week, came off the bench mid-second quarter. But the staff told him this week, this is your game. You don't have to look over your shoulder, you know, if things aren't going well. I mean, obviously, if things turn really south, they put Dalton Snead in. Correct. But he had the confidence knowing, okay, I'm going to have an opportunity here. And he's performed well. Right. And he's a guy that has experience, played a lot last year. Four lot. starts last year. So, and did some good things, came in and, and helped win the, the Cannon game against uh, Nevada, helped win that game, did a really nice job. Played against Wyoming last Absolutely. year. Absolutely, and played well. Made some big plays in that game. And I think he's a year older. He had to sit and watch because of his shoulder injury, so he's a little more mature. He's still preparing like he's a starter. He's a bright guy. As you can see, he's very athletic. And, and he's up on his average right now. 11 of 17, 137 yards with a touchdown. 55 yards rushing as well. Right now, if they kicked it from here, you're looking at about a 49, 50-yard field goal. Save that timeout to get the field goal unit out there. Palandek has a man to the 11-yard line. It is 32 out of the backfield. Or excuse me, Jericho Flowers. They're going to kill it here. They're going to clock it with a spike. Make sure everybody's set. Does a nice job. And you know what? I, th this is such great execution of the two-minute drill because they didn't burn the timeout. Now you get an end zone shot. If you burn the timeout, you have to be careful because if you get a sack, you don't get your field goal unit out there. So it was well done by Tony Sanchez. Or two in zone shots, on second and third down. It's a nice little in route from the top. Nice. He beats safety and corner back across their face to the middle of the field. They're going in a tandem bunch on both sides. Boyd is on the near side. Palandek. Throws it away. Smart, smart play. play. Good job. Six seconds left. Now there's six. And Tony Sanchez off camera. We were just watching him, and he used his right foot. <laughs> Swung it out. As if to say, I want the kicking unit. Well, it's, it's third down here. So if there's a bot snap, you get another chance. So still a timeout left. They have a timeout, so if there's a botch snap here, you still get another chance. It's the right call. Coach Sanchez. And Wyoming will call a timeout. This kick will be about a 28-yarder. Uh, football fans in the Rocky Mountain region, Root Sports has your all-access pass to your favorite teams. We kick off our coverage every Thursday at 5.30. Your insider report for New Mexico on Lobo football with Bob Davey. Then a half hour later, it's inside Wyoming football with Craig Bowl. We're all things Cowboy football. And then at 6.30, it's the Rams report with Mike Bobo. For all your Colorado State coverage, the Mountain West lives here on Root Sports. I saw a gentleman for SB Nation who wrote a piece, and one of those numbers guys, and he said the Mountain Division has outperformed this year the SEC East. Here's the Pantel's kick, and he squeezed it inside that left upright, and it's 30-24 UNLV. Got a man down. It's Joe Lang, the long snapper. Sometimes, you know, there's so many bodies in there. You're intertwined at times with your feet and legs. You kind of get bent back. Palandek handles, or excuse me, uh, Lang handles not only placements, but 
He's a snapper, the long snapper on punts. He's inside. You see him right there. Got rolled up on. Rolled up on. Lot, there's a lot of bodies in there. He's a kid that started his college football career at Washington State. And he looks like he's going to be all right. There is one second left. So you're going to have to get a kickoff here. They have packed uh, plenty of excitement into the first 29 minutes great. and 59 seconds of this it's half. Huh? It's been great. Looking what a football for, game. Looking for some kind of hard squib. If you can't get in the end zone, you want some kind of hard squib. But I don't know if I want Josh Allen with one more shot scrambling around trying to throw the ball down the field because he can carry it 70 yards in the air. You also have DJ May who almost brought one back uh, 102 absolutely. yards. He had a 51-yard so, uh, kick return earlier. With one second, I'm trying to get some kind of hard squib and make one of the upbacks pick it up. That's exactly what they do. See if they pitch it back. Nope. So we'll go to the locker room. 54 points on the scoreboard in the first half. You